Amen. Our pastor has been on fire for several series. How many hours our pastor spends preparing this message to give to you that God has given him because he's been gifted. He is a five talent man. God blessed him to minister to this congregation at this place, this set time. He breaks it down to where we can learn and we can understand. And when we leave, we retain it. We understand the word of God for the first time in our lives, amen? So pray for our pastors, encourage our pastors, edify our pastor. It's my honor to introduce Pastor Ron Baptiste. Amen. Give the Lord a shout this morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I tell you what, I want you to turn around and greet somebody, love on somebody, tell them welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Glad to see you, glad to have you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, son. Make everybody feel welcome in the house of the Lord. So glad to see you, so glad to have you this morning. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes and amen, welcome. So glad to see you all this morning, hallelujah. Yes and amen. Amen. JB, give me a little air up here, a little air conditioner. Just a little bit. Glory to God. All right. Let's come back to our seats. Come on back. And let's go before the Lord. Let's ask his blessings upon his word this morning. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne. And Father, we openly declare that we have forgiven all of our enemies. We have forgiven all those that have despitefully used us. We have forgiven all those that have spoke all matter of evil against us. Therefore, Father, grant unto your Son this morning with all boldness that I may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal the brokenhearted, deliver the captives, recover sight to the blind, Remove all the burdens, destroy the yokes, and bring prosperity to these your sheep. Father, you said in your word that I can have whatsoever I ask. So I ask now that in the name of Jesus, that the power of the living God will come into this very room. That Jesus will stand at every heart's door and knock, and the Holy Spirit will spring forth like rivers of living water, with signs, wonders, and miracles, that they may come forth to give all the glory and honor to your son Jesus. Now, Father, I, I die to myself, and I willingly open up my spirit man to you, Lord, that you may speak through me and minister to these your sheep. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may have a seat in the house of the Lord. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I speak peace upon the house of God. Amen? Peace is a wonderful thing. Peace and freedom. You know, you never really appreciate peace and freedom until you've lost it. But once you've lost it, you learn to appreciate it. Amen? Let me say this to you. I have three mandates from God upon my life as pastor of this church. One of them is to confirm God's covenant with his people. It's important that the people of God understand they have a contract with God, a covenant with God, and what is in that covenant that is there for you. The second one is to return the church back to the word of God. 
too many denominations, too many religions have varied away from the Word of God, have gotten into self-help books and entertainment, and we need to get back to the Word of God. The third one God just recently charged me with was to restore the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the church. Now, I know when I say that, those of us that have been involved, in, and I'm just going to speak plainly today. Is that all right? Amen? Y'all know I'm going to do it anyway. Amen? <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, there's a denomination around that if you've been involved in it, you're going to get your feelings hurt sooner or later. But as I speak about the restoring the ministry of the, of the Holy Spirit, as I get prepared, and, and the Lord laid this on my heart, because we've got those denominations on the right side of the ditch that have these many, many claims, and then we've got those on the left side of the ditch that say that it doesn't even exist. And what happens is, is they pollute our mind with these things, and then once we've seen it or been a part of it, we retain some of that. And I want you to understand, and this is what I'm going to minister on, the ministry of the Holy Spirit today. It, because religion is a camouflage. Religion wants to draw you away from an intimate relationship with God. Religion has a tendency to bring you over into legalism. And a lot of denominations that their main topic of conversation is the Holy Ghost. Now, as an evangelist and, and one that traveled a lot at one time, I've been in a lot of Pentecostal churches and a lot of charismatic churches. I've been, and I, I've seen a great deal. I've seen things that they claim to be of the Holy Spirit that was not. It was of the flesh. And I, as, a, as, as someone who is so appreciative of what God has done in my life, I respect the things of God. That's how come we have ordinances in this house of God that everything will be done decently and in order. Amen? Because what I've seen happen to uplift the flesh. How holy am I? You know, how great I am. I have these spiritual gifts and you don't. And then they carry on some things. And even sometimes on Christian TV, we hear these prophets prophesying. I never will forget one time I was in a church and there was a prophetess that stood up to speak. They let her speak. And she said that within six months that everybody in that church would be out of debt. Well, of course, you know, the church just screamed and shouted and, and, and you know, everybody agreed, yes, amen, that's just wonderful. But a year later, that prophecy did not come to be fulfilled. Now, I know the Word of God. And the Word of God says that when a prophet prophesies and it does not come to pass, that you should stone them to death. That'd free up a lot of TV time, wouldn't it? But I want to bring to you a balance because the ministry of the Holy Spirit is so important to us as believers. And because we have been taught against the right side of the ditch, against the left side of the ditch, that we assume things without discovering it in the Word of God. As always, everything I teach you, I will back up by the Word of God. This is meant to help you and give you clear direction because the ministry of the Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood, the most mistaught, and the most abused, yet it is the most important thing to a Christian. And we need to understand how it works. So look with me, if you would, real quick into uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 
The Bible says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith, once again, I can tie everything I'm saying back to the first of the year. Walking by faith is the spiritual. And the Bible says that we should walk by faith because when we walk by faith, which is the spiritual, that means that we're tuned in to God and we're following his direction. And it says, and not by sight. And sight means that we're following our five senses, what we hear, see, smell, touch. We're following our emotions. And believe you me, I've seen the emotions run wild on the right side of the ditch and on the left side of the ditch. But yet we have no, we have no real strong teaching on the truth of the Holy Spirit ministry in the Word of God. And it's time that we did that. And the Lord has laid it on my heart to bring that to the forefront because you need the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In these last days that we're in, and, and understand this, we are definitely in the last days. I mean, I'm not here to teach the book of Revelations about to you, but I know the book of Revelations, and I know all the signs that lead up to it. We are in those signs right now. They have been fulfilled. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Jesus came back today. But it is my job as pastor to bring you a balance to the Word of God. So it says here that we walk by faith and not by sight. If we want victory in the natural, in, our, in what we see, we're only going to get victory in the natural through the spiritual. Once again, we live in a life of where the natural and the spiritual run parallel with one another. And God has all these promises for us. Once again, we have our covenant with God that we have. And now we're going back to the Word of God. We, the body of Christ today has gone to too many entertainers. They've gone to too many self-help books. We've got too many translations of the Word of God. When I'm studying the Word of God, that I go to the original Greek, I go to the original Hebrew, I spend a lot of time in this, because you know what? That tells me exactly what's going on. Even though I love the King James Bible, I cut my teeth on the King James Bible, even the King James Bible is incorrect in some places comparing to the original text. Therefore, these things must be brought out. Go with me now real quick, if you would, to John chapter 14, verse 12. Now, you'll notice that I have been in John chapter 14 quite a lot. Now, I want you to also notice this, how much revelation that we have pulled out of one chapter will blow your mind. And that's just part of the Word of God. And this is the job of the Holy Spirit to reveal to you revelation knowledge in God's Word because a natural man can't understand the things of God because they are spiritually discerned to him. And yet here we are, born again believers, washed in the blood of Jesus. I'm not doubting your salvation at all, but yet you're struggling with so many issues, so many things and trials and tribulations in your life that you're not happy with what's going on in your life. And the reason is because you're not spiritual enough to grab the things out of the spiritual realm and apply them to your fleshly realm, which is the carnal. And that's the job of the Holy Spirit, to lead, guide, and direct you. And the church said, Amen. So stay with me now as we look at John chapter 14. I'm going to pick this up in verse 12. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now watch this very important word right there, the word because. Now also, number one, let me bring this to you, to, to, to a point here. Jesus said, truly, truly, and sometimes when we read over that, we don't think much about it because our 
mind today in our human language and our human vocabulary has a hard time comprehending what was going on in these, in these particular days when Jesus was saying this. But when Jesus was saying, saying right here in, in what was it, verse uh, 12, and he said right here in verse 12, he said, verily, verily, what he's saying is truly, truly. And we may issue a thought in our mind, well, what's Jesus mean, truly, truly? Is that like somebody telling you, I'm going to tell you the truth, implying that they may have lied to you earlier? That's not it at all. When Jesus says, verily, verily, which is truly, truly, he's putting an emphasis on what he's about to say, that this is enduring truth. Nothing can change the truth. So here in verse 12, he says, verily, verily, showing you how important it is what he's about to say. Now, once again, let me go back and remind you of the situation here. Jesus is about to be crucified. Jesus is training his disciples. He's giving them their last instructions before he is taken away. Everything Jesus is saying is critically important to them and important to the, to the future of the church. So he says here, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Now there's a key word right there, he that believeth on me. And you know what? When you believe on Jesus, you're gonna believe what he had to say, amen? So Jesus is saying, watch this with me now very carefully. He's saying right here, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, what you have seen me do. And he's talking to us today in the modern day church. He's saying what you have read that I did. I raised the dead, I cleansed the leopard, I healed the sick. You know what, made blind eyes see, cast out devils. He's saying the works that I did that you read about, he's saying you shall do also. So what's wrong with the church? We're coming to church to get a goosebump and a jerk and a jiggle and we're coming to church to be entertained and all of a sudden Jesus is saying, do you believe in me? So as he's reading this right now, he's saying to us very clearly, he's saying right here, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, watch this, and greater works shall he do, and the most important part of this is when he says, because, because, because I go to the Father. He's saying, I'm going to have to leave you. If I don't leave you, you're not going to be able to do the works that I did. If I don't leave you, you're not going to do the greater works. And so many times I hear other ministers and I've had phone calls from some friends of mine and they had to say, Pastor, what does this mean about greater works? And I'm interested in the greater works. Don't be interested in the greater works until you're doing the works. Once you do the works, then we'll be talking about the greater works. But as we look deeper into the Word of God, God is speaking to us. He said, because I go unto my Father, in verse 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that I will do. What promises of God? Jesus is saying, you're going to do the works that I did. You're going to do greater works than I do. And he's talking to us right now, right here. He's saying, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do. Whatever you ask. Whatever you ask, I will do. Why is that not happening? Because the modern day church is so wrapped up in the natural, we're so wrapped up in religion, we're so wrapped up in denomination, that you know what? We read things like this in the Bible, and we want to say to ourselves, if it was only true, brothers and sisters, it is true. And this is that we go about healing the sick, we go about raising the dead, we go about casting out devils, we go about laying hands on the sick. 
And why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we saying it? Because the bottom line is, here it comes. We really, in our hearts, don't believe. We believe we're born again. We believe we're Christians. And here's our deal. We believe that's good enough. That is not good enough for me. I believe every word that's in the Bible. I believe what God said. I expect for covenant confirmer ministries to do the works that Jesus did and greater. How are we going to do this? By following the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. The whole, uh -oh, the whole reason of this is not to glorify you. We got too many entertainers. We got too many preachers in the pulpit. We got too many people that think they're celebrity ministers and all this stuff going on. And you know what? The Bible says that the whole reason to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out devils, is to glorify God. I present to you today, that's the problem of the modern day church. We're too busy glorifying ourselves. We're too busy glorifying our denomination. We're too busy glorifying our theologies. And the truth of the matter is, all we got to do is glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it shall happen in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do. 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me. Well, I know we may be saying I love Jesus and I'm doing everything I can. And I understand that. I've been in them shoes before. I know exactly what you're saying. But I'm here to tell you right now, because you're operating in the natural, you're born again. I'm not denying that. You're on your way to heaven. If you were to die today, you'd be in the presence of God. How wonderful that is. But you know what? God wants more for you than that. God wants you to be successful on this earth. God wants you to be healed. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be just like Jesus walking around on this earth, doing the things of God and greater than him. This is what God wants from you. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall, and he, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus is speaking to the disciples. He's speaking to the modern day church today. He's letting us know the reason I left. So that God could bring you another comforter. We all know that Jesus was a great comfort to be around. How I would have loved to have been a disciple and walk with Jesus those three years and saw all the things that Jesus did and heard the teaching of Jesus Christ. How wonderful that was. But I'm here to tell you right now, there's something more wonderful than that. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because he said, when I go away, I will send you another, another comforter to comfort you. To help you. Stay with me. Is everybody okay this morning? Amen. I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. How wonderful is that to know that the comforter, the Holy Spirit, will never leave you and never forsake you. And how about this? It's not based upon how good you are. Listen to me, religion and denomination bases everything on how good you are. If you're good, you get everything. If you're bad, you get nothing. That is a lie from hell. The Bible is very clear about that. The Bible says, when you belong to me and I belong to you, my spirit's in your spirit, I will bless you. Only you can stop the blessings of God. And only you can stop the, the covenant of promises that God has for you. Because you're trying to reach things in the natural instead of the spiritual. We need to get more involved in the ministry of the Holy Spirit and understand what His purpose is. And that is exactly what this message right here is intended to do. Stay with me. 
It says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. He's given us fair warning. The natural world will not understand the things of the Holy Spirit. How sad that is, but even we got Christians, born again believers, that don't understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because we've been taught that it's this, we've been taught that it's that, we've been taught that it's this, that, and something else. Because we don't get into the Word of God for ourselves. I'm here to tell you today in this series I'm about to teach you, I'm going to show you everything there is about the Holy Spirit. So that you'll understand the job is. And take advantage of it in the name of Jesus. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Watch verse 18. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. What love, what a promise that not only is he speaking to the disciples, he's speaking to you and me. He's saying, the great things that I did, you're going to do them and you're going to do greater. He says, not only that, I'm going to send you someone just like me. But watch this. Jesus' physical body could only be with the disciples at certain periods of time. But you know what? The Holy Spirit can be everywhere, anywhere, at all times. He can be in Africa. He can be in England. The Holy Spirit can be in America. And that's why it's important. And that is our comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. But how many Christian believers look at the Holy Spirit as a comforter? Most of us are afraid of it because we don't understand it. We've been taught this and taught that, and we don't understand what's going on. But I'm here to tell you about right now, by the Word of God, we will learn this. Go with me to Matthew 10, chapter, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, real quick. I'm going to come down there with you. Is that all right? I'm starting this, this fight early. Matthew 10, verse 5. The 12, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them. This is an order. This is not will you. How about it? It's a command. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not unto the way of the Gentiles, and to any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. Now, Pastor, what does that mean? Because Gentiles are anybody that was not, a, was not a Jew. That includes the majority of everybody in this room. I didn't know that. Because even the Bible says that Jesus was sent to the Jew first. Because the Jew was God's chosen people. But they neglected him. That's how come we got the disciples. That's how come we got the apostle Paul. Because all of a sudden now, what was meant for the Jew first was open up to the world. Thank God. Amen. Can I share another little tidbit with you? Biblical historians believe that the American Indian race is, is a lost tribe of, of, of the Jews that were lost. I agree. Amen. Now, I like that. I feel better already. Watch this with me now. It says here in verse 6, But go rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach. Preach. Now this is a commandment. Watch this. And as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is coming back. Watch this. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely have you received, freely give in the name of Jesus. Amen? So watch this. When a crisis comes into your life, and I see this as pastor all the time, that we can have a family that's, that's in the house of God, been members of the house of God for a long time, love the Lord, ain't nobody doubting the love for the Lord, but all of a sudden, things enter in. 
and start chipping away at that family. And when they do, before we know it, we're in a total war and we end up looking like the rest of the world. With all the problems they got, listen, the divorce rate is just as high in the, in the church as it is out there in the world system. It ought not be so. It is because we focus too much on the natural and not enough on the spiritual. If you want your marriage to last, focus on the spiritual. Because I'm here to tell you something right now. The devil will throw everything he can at your marriage. The devil wants to break up a covenant. And that's what marriage is. It's a covenant. And if he can break it up, he will break it up. If he can cause disasters in your home, he will cause a disaster in your home. But what do we do? We, we won't go, go listen to somebody on TV. We won't, we won't know what Dr. Phil got to say about it. We want to know what all these other people get. We want to go buy a book. We want to read a book about how to save your marriage. Here it is right here. Try the book. Because when we look to the spiritual, listen, nothing in the natural can change the spiritual, but the spiritual can always change the natural by the word of the living God. Amen? Stay with me. Stay with me right now. Is everybody Okay. So when a crisis comes, stop focusing on your natural problems. The devil wants to get you focused on your natural problems. Well, he said this, she said that. You're focused on that. You ought to be focused on the spiritual and watch it get resolved. Don't wait until a disaster hits. Be in the spiritual before the disaster hits. Hebrews 10, 38. Oh, boy, we, I got to get on with this. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hebrews 10, 38. You there, amen? When? When? Not till you get in trouble. See, if you're not in any trouble, now's the time. Now's the time. Stay with me. Now the just, who's the just? We are. We've been justified by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now the just shall live by what? By faith. That's the spiritual, not the natural. I'm trying to save your life. I'm trying to save your marriage. I'm trying to save the life of your children. Because we have to be awoken up. The modern day church is so involved in the natural. But yet when the bottom drops out, we run to the spiritual. And we don't know the first thing we're looking at because we've never prepared ourselves for it. But what we do is we blame God. We blame Jesus. Oh, Jesus, why don't you help me now? And the whole time we could have been building up our reserve and our spirit, man, with the Word of God and understanding what God has to say about these things. And you know what? Uh oh, is everybody okay? Jesus said, and nothing by any means shall harm you. The word nothing is nothing. Uh oh, is everybody all right? Y'all still love me, don't you? Good. I got security in here, by the way. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The Bible says that, that the Lord lives for the prosperity of his servants. He wants you wealthy. He wants you healed. He wants you delivered. He wants peace in your home. But if you're going to live in the natural more than you are the spiritual, he says, my soul shall have no pleasure in that. Why is that? Because he can't do a thing about it because you're living too much in the natural. Uh-oh. 
Stay with me. We're getting quiet in this Presbyterian church. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them. And the church said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say that with me. Say, we We are not not of them. Now you keep confessing that and watch yourself get pulled out. We're not of the natural. We're not, we're not of the believers who get divorced. We're not of the believers who get addicted. We're not of the believers that turn to be alcoholics. We're not of the, of the believers that end up going to prison. We're not of the believers that end up going to nut houses. We're not, we're not, we're not. Because God's given us that power. Oh, boy. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but them that believe. That's who we are. See, if you'll start confessing the, the spiritual instead of the natural, it's going to change your life. It says right here, but them that believe to the saving of the soul. Chapter 11. Now faith is the substance So many times, even believers and lost people alike will say, well, I don't know about all that faith stuff. I don't know, you know what, all that sounds wonderful and all this. But I want something I can see and feel and touch. We'll read chapter 11. Faith is the spiritual. Faith is the substance Substance is something you can hear and see and feel and touch. Several of you have been with me almost from the beginning. I knew you when you were broke, busted, and disgusted. I knew you when your families were torn all apart and all these terrible things going on in your life. And now here you are, bless God, you own homes. Everybody say substance. You own cars. Everybody say substance. You own motorcycles, everybody say substance. And God has moved in your life because faith, spiritual, is the substance. If you want proof, then go to the Word of God and watch Him. God said, prove me now. He's saying, put my back to the wall. Everybody all right? Pastor, you got to calm down. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Because we used to hope for it. We used to hope for a good marriage. Once again, oh, is everybody all right? It's hard to appreciate a good wife until you've had a bad one. Can I get an amen? (laughs) And you hope, why can't I be happy? I know what I'm talking about. I've been in them shoes myself. Why can't I find somebody that loves me? Why, Why can't I be happy like everybody else? Bless God, I've been married now for almost 41 years, and that is the substance I got proof it works. Oh, boy. Stay with me. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for because I hope for it. I hope for it. When you hope for it, watch this. You're going to see it in your mind. When you hope for it in the spiritual and you see it in your mind, you will receive it. It's coming. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. The evidence. Look at what's going on. It's the evidence. Uh Uh-oh. This entire church where you're sitting today is the evidence. This entire corner belongs to Covenant Confirmer Ministries. The evidence. 
The evidence of what? The evidence of things of God work the word and the word works. I'm not talking about being goody two-shoes. I'm talking about following what God has to say about prosperity. Following what God has to say about these things in your life that we hope for. What we want to do, because we watch too many Tinkerbell movies and too many Walt Disney movies, we want, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. But you ain't doing nothing but saying, I believe. But when you put God's word into action, you get the And the evidence will be there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Is everybody still okay with me? No, you're not going to run out and leave me now, are you? Romans 10, 17. Oh, man. Oh, that's good, Lord. Romans 10, 17. Y'all ready, amen? So then faith cometh by what? Do you need more faith? Yeah. You need more hearing. Watch this. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing what? The Word. Once again, I return to the Word. We believers have got to get to a point in our life where we always go back to the Word. I don't care what they said on this Christian TV network. I don't care what they said here. I don't care what they said there. You know what? If it don't stand on the Word, it will not stand. And here's the awesome thing about having the substance and the evidence. It will stand forever. It will stay. It's not going to be here today and gone tomorrow. It is going to stand forever. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Increase your faith by increase your hearing and hearing the Word of God. Now, oh, man. John 14, verse 15. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Passed it up. And mine's paper clip. John 14, 15. Where is mine? There I is. He says that he will give you another comforter that may abide with you forever. Now, let me try to present this to you. Inquiring minds like mine, I try to put myself in a disciple's position. Because here are the disciples. They seen Jesus in the flesh. They seen all the miracles that he did. It was wonderful being around them. They witnessed all this. Now, here is Jesus telling them, I'm fixing to go away, but I'm going to send somebody else a comforter. <coughs> they don't know what he's talking about. They don't have, and they're all tore all to pieces because their meal ticket's fixing to leave. See, they were like the other Jews. They thought Jesus was going to take over the Roman Empire. They thought they were all going to have these high positions with Jesus when Jesus became emperor. They had all these dreams and plans. I'm fixing to be killed. I'm fixing to be murdered. And they said, oh, no. What about what we've invested? Because they're too involved in the natural to see the spiritual. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Watch this now. So we choose to use it or not. We can, oh, this is the sad thing. We can be born again. For five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and never use this, never use the spiritual. And if the spiritual is part of your covenant promise. Once again, the covenant is the fact, and this is why we, we, were, we, we, we were dubbed Covenant Confirmer Ministries, because we are to confirm the covenant of God between God and his people, and to try to make it simple, what it means is this. 
is that every year we are in, when you get born again, washed by the blood of Jesus, you enter into a covenant with Almighty God, a blood covenant on the blood of Jesus. And what it says is everything, everything, everything that belongs to God belongs to you. Everything. Healing, prosperity, peace, love, joy. All of it belongs to you. But on the other hand, everything you got belongs to God. You belong to God. And what happens is we get so involved in the natural. And oh, and here is the job of religion to draw you away from the Word of God, get you over here into religion, because in religion, you're not accountable for anything. All you got to do is show up. But when you're drawn by the Word of God, you're drawn into a relationship with God. And when you're drawn to a relationship with God, there is responsibilities on your part. God... You said what you've got belongs to me. I receive it and I accept it. God, everything I have belongs to you. You tell me what you want. Everybody okay with me? Amen? All right, all right, all right. Where was I? John 14, 15? John 14, 16. Is that correct? Let me see where I am right here. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. And then he may abide with you forever. Go with me now to verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, there it is. The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Ain't no doubt about it. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Stay with me. Stay with me. But the comforter, which is a Holy Ghost, my name, he shall teach you all things. Teach you how many things? Now, let me tell you what you're, let me just, I'm going to give you one tidbit of what you're missing. Just a tidbit. He doesn't say I'm going to teach you all things in the Bible. I'm going to teach you all things concerning your job, concerning your children. I, know, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, man, I could have swore my mother followed me around everywhere I went. She knew everything I did. I'd get home and get a whipping because she knew what I did. I forgot about neighbors and a telephone. All of a sudden now, let me give you this quick testimony. Before I surrendered to the ministry, my wife and I owned a very successful company. Very successful. And I also was offered a position on the international market with a, with a huge corporation out of Canada. And I didn't need that job. I'm making great money. But the Lord told me to take it. So I took it. And I had to spend almost two months with a Jewish fella, very strong in his faith, on the road with him. I'm going to try to make a long story short. And we started, they took us, flew us down into Florida and said, come up the East Coast and meet with us. Because he was to train me on all these things concerning this corporation. But I happened to sit in on a meeting with him that where this corporation had lost a distributor. And I had, I've been with him maybe a week, a week. And I'm sitting in on this meeting, keeping my mouth shut. But let me tell you this, before every meeting I ever had in the business world, I always took communion. I took communion and I stood on the word of God. I said, Father, you're going to teach me all things. You're going to show me all things. Long story short, with that first distributor, they asked me a question, and the Jewish guy I was with said, well, he, he's in training. He doesn't know much. And the guy said, I still want to know what he's got to say. 
So I said it. And I got that distributorship back. And the Jewish guy called the CEO, said, I don't know what happened. He said, but he, but Ron Baptiste just got this distributor back with what little knowledge he's got. And the CEO said, well, let's see if this really works. You come on up to the East Coast, and I want you to visit all these distributors that we've lost. I want you to set up a meeting with them, and we'll just see how great this goes. Five distributors along the East Coast. I got every one of them back. Every one of them. How is that possible? Because I stood on the Word of God. That's the Holy Ghost. We'll teach you all things. All things. Is everybody okay? Oh, man, I got, I, got to, I got to get this going here. Stay with us. Everybody all right? Amen? All right, all right, all right. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever. I can't even read my Bible. I have said unto you. Watch this. Some of my age have said, well, you know, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm starting to forget things. I'm concerned. Stand on the Word. The Holy Spirit. See, you're standing on the natural, that you're worried that something's wrong with your brain. And before long, you're going to talk yourself into that. I know something's wrong with me. I'm forgetting. Listen, I've been hitting the head so many times, it's a wonder I know who I am half the time. But I stand on the Word of God, that the Word of God says that, you know what, the, the Holy Spirit will bring to you all things to your remembrance. So instead of talking yourself into a national disaster, talk yourself into the Word of God. And the church said, Amen. Okay, okay, we got to hurry, we got to hurry. Galatians 4.1. Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. I, ain't a, I want to hear about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I got to find Galatians. There it is. Galatians 4.1. Concerning your spiritual growth. Watch this. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. In other words... You can be a born-again believer. You can have the covenant of God. You can have all these things promised to you. But until you grow up, you're just like a servant. Let me read that to you again. Now I say that the heir, which is you, as long as he be a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of, Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors, until the time appointed by the Father, until we grow up mature enough, God wants to unleash the blessings of God upon you. Don't you know God wants you to prosper? Don't you know God wants you to be healed? Don't you know God wants you delivered? Don't you know God wants your marriage to work? Don't you know God wants your children protected? Don't you know all these are part of the covenant of God? But until you grow up some, because, you know, I want y'all to picture a 40-year-old man walking around with pampers on. That's some of us. We've been saved for years, but yet... Because we deal in the natural, we've never advanced. And the things of the spiritual seem a little bit foolish. But they work when you work the Word of God. The church said, Amen. Hebrews 5.12, I'm, trying, I'm coming in for a crash landing. Hebrews 5.12. Nope, stand up with me. Stand up. Amen. Here you go. Everybody all right? I don't know whether to say, oh my, or oh me. <laughs> but the word is good. Listen, I can come in here and give you a Reader's Digest message. I can come in here. Listen, 
I know how to get you excited. I can get you excited, get you running and jumping over these chairs. Yahoo, who would be? Hallelujah. Ain't that just well, I can do all that. So I've done it before in the past. I know how to get people going. But I also know this. It didn't do them a bit of good once they left the building. I want to install the written word of God in you. I want you to clearly understand that there is a spiritual realm waiting there for you and all you got to do is tap into it and watch all these things change in your life. I open up this altar here for you today. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to come up on this side of the auditorium. Let me pray with you today. Let me lead you to Jesus. Let me bring you out of this mess. If you're here today and you are a believer, but maybe things aren't working out very well for you, it's time that you come and dedicate your life to the Lord. Listen, if you want to play in the natural the rest of your life, God will let you do it. But if you want to stop the natural mess and get into the spiritual and watch how this thing works, it's an amazing thing, then dedicate yourself to God. All of you. Every part of your being. If that's you today, you come up over here. We want to pray with you as well. If you're interested in joining this church, love to have you. Want to become a member? Love to have you. If that's you, you come up here as well. And here too, if you're interested in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now I know that phrase means a lot to a lot of different people. But I'm talking about something I know works. I'm not talking about that radical stuff, that, 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 that fruit flake mess that's out there sometimes. I'm talking about the evidence that it works. The evidence. If that's you, you come up here as well. I want to pray with you today. But listen, if you're here today, you just need prayer. You don't know what you need, but you know you need something. Don't you know the Holy Spirit knows exactly what you need? If that's you, you come up here as well. We won't pray with you. Come quickly. We won't be here much longer.